Hey guys, Ben here for the Bonehead Podcast, and welcome to Special Play Cards Review. So, we don't normally pick up the cards, um, because there tends to be lots of individual packs and everything like that. However, as it is a brand new edition, what we thought was we would actually get the basic card pack, have a look at what's inside it, and whether or not it would be that useful, so that you guys can decide if it's something that you want to buy or not. Um, before I move on, I just want to say a massive thank you to entoyment.co.uk, our friendly local gaming store who have helped us uh, get these products so that we can do reviews um, really good shop we run our tournaments there and a really good online store as well so if you're after war gaming stuff and you're in the uk entoyment.co.uk can recommend supporting them actually helps support our show which as well which is really lovely so without further ado we will look at the cards so what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look inside the box so <laughs> there's an absolute ton of cards in here very hefty which is pretty cool. Um, so on the back you can see that there is the different deck types. So we've got Prayers to Nuffle here um, and it goes on down into random events. So let's move that through. And then we've got Miscellaneous Mayhem. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Random events, random events. And miscellaneous Mayhem. Then we should have Magical Memorabilia and Heroic Feats. I think we've probably got one more as well, which is the Dirty Tricks deck. So what we'll do is we'll go through these cards. You know what? There's a ton of, ton of these cards. Uh, benefits of training as well. So there's absolutely tons of different decks here. So we will go through them and just see how useful they are but before we do we will have a look at the inducement selection for them so in order to five special plays 100k each as an inducement available to any team each special plays inducement purchase gives you one special play card to use during the game ahead cards are drawn from one or more of the special play decks so each special plays inducement allows to draw from a single deck the deck is determined randomly by rolling a d6 um, roll on each basically roll for each once the D6 has been rolled, the appropriate special players card deck is shuffled and two cards are drawn from the top. You may then read both cards and choose one to keep. So this is why we um, didn't really do much with the cards previously, is because they are so incredibly swingy. There was a separate um, rule set allowing you to purchase a specific deck. So, you know, this is worth 50k, this one's worth 50, uh, 100k, and there was a one that was like 200k. So we're going to look through the cards and um, hope that there is that system out there again. So let's have a look at Prayers to Nuffle first of all. So the great thing about this deck... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you uh, may have seen our podcast episode from a few weeks ago where we talked through the prayers to nuffle table and I remember us saying, uh, man, tracking these is going to be tricky. Not so much if you've got these cards. This will make it so much easier for you. So even though 16 of the cards in this deck, which is... It feels like almost half of them are there for the prayers to nuffle. That will be useful if you are using it in league. Now, you're probably going to end up using it in league, and it's probably not going to come up very often, but it is still definitely worth having those cards if you are. I mean, a bit of notepad or a post-it note would probably do the same thing, but this way it just looks pretty good. So, dirty tricks. We'll start with these ones here. So, we've got uh, Spot the Sneak. Um, play this card at the start of your any of your team turns before any player is activated. If this card takes effect, its, expect, its effect expires at the end of this drive. So I love the formatting of these cards. Before we go on any further, um, these are well structured. They're bigger than magic cards. They are the bigger size, so getting card sleeves for these is going to be probably a bit tricky. But the way it's set out tells you when to play it, how long it goes on for, and the actual effect of it. That is very good game design, so it helps players actually understand what exactly it is. So this one here, Spot the Sneak, choose one player on your team that's currently in the reserves box and roll a d6. On a 5 or 6, uh, regardless of meh, how many players you've got on the pitch, you can put that one up on one of the trap doors. At the end of this drive, the player is automatically sent off. 
So sneak a dude on. Uh, look, a distraction. Play this card immediately after one of your position's term team turns has ended. Um, if during that turn one of their players was stalling. So duration, end of the drive. While this card is in play, uh, your opponent must roll a d6 if they wish to activate any player on the team that was stalling when their last team turn ended. Uh, 1 to 3 they can't be activated and 4, 5, 6 they can. Okay, so stalling is a new mechanic, not really. It's a, it's a new definition in the rules in the rule set essentially. So this one means that if somebody stalls the next turn they have to roll a 4 plus to activate. That could be costly if you've got that one, but only if your opponent stalls. Um, Rune of Unwilling Flight. So play this card at the end of any of your team turns, uh, even if it ended with a turnover. Choose one standing opposition player with strength 4 or less. That player is immediately catapulted through the air. Immediately treat that player as being thrown as if they had the right stuff trait by another player with the throw teammate trait and treat the quality of the throw as terrible. So interesting so rune of unwilling flight as if they had to by another player with a t oh i see so literally just pick a dude and it gets thrown as if it was being thrown with throw teammate however it's automatically terrible so that is going to end somebody <laughs> that's going to throw them into the crowd that's going to throw them somewhere and they're going to have to land if that's a ball carrier that could be really costly so that's quite useful as well uh, slippery Shoes. Play this card at the start of uh, your opponent's team turn. When this card is in play, a minus, uh, minus two to every rush. So minus two to go for it. Uh, tripping Hazard. Play this card at the start of any of the opposition's team turns. Choose D3 standing players on the opponent's team, none of which can be in possession of the ball. These players are immediately placed prone. Someone call the groundskeeper, I spy a tripwire. Don't worry, it's already found out. Okay, cool. So that's going to knock down D3 of your opponent's players that don't have the ball. That's significantly less than throw teammating one of them. Uh, the main <laughs> the main sculprit. There's always one who just can't help themselves. Play this card during the pre-game sequence after step 5, but before step 6. Okay, fine. So this is right at the beginning of the game. Um, choose one player on your, turn, on your team. It gains dirty player and sneaky git. If the player is sent off, you may not argue or use a bribe. Okay, so that's going to be good for some teams and bad for others. However, the teams that have enough money to spend 100k inducing a random card um, are going to be the kind of team that we think is probably going to be <laughs> benefiting. Um, heavy bias. Play this card when a player belonging to your team commits a foul after the victim has been nominated, but before making the armor roll. The player committing the foul gains one assist. In addition, the player committing the foul cannot be sent off, uh, regardless of what else is going on, including any other rules. So you get plus one to foul, and you cannot be sent off. That's pretty useful. Dirty block. There's a lot of regulations governing blocking. I think that one broke them all. Uh, play at the end of any of your turns. Uh, choose one standing player on your team that did not activate during this team turn that is marking one or more opposition players. This player is immediately placed prone, and one of the players they are marking is immediately knocked down. So if you've got this card, now it won't work if you've activated a player, so it has to be someone you're starting with. But if you've got a lineman facing down a Minotaur or something, then being able to immediately, well not immediately, but at the end of the turn automatically um, knock the Minotaur onto the ground, taking themselves with them, could be useful because a knockdown will be an armor roll and that is going to slow down your enemy right random events now let's have a look what do we got first we've got ball clone um if at the start of opposing team turn before any player is activated the ball is on the ground you may play this card okay that's quite restrictive so really that's going to be useful on a kickoff i think or just you know if you get lucky place a second ball in the square the ball currently occupies um no ball can contain no square can have two balls and immediately bounce out um da -da 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 -da. And a player can only carry one ball at a time. When a touchdown is scored, <laughs> roll a d6. On a 1-3, to three, the ball evaporates and is immediately removed from play. No touchdown is scored. So, I think we've seen that effect before. It can be good. Um, hey, it reduces your opponent's chance of scoring a touchdown by 50%. <laughs> Although they've got two balls to do it with. Uh, enjoy your trip. Uh, play this card at the end of any of your team turns, even if it ended with a turnover. Uh, choose one 
standing opposing player that's being marked by one of your players and that player is immediately placed prone so you just knock a guy over but no armor medium medium not as good as throwing teammate <laughs> that's that's something uh heckler play this card immediately after one of the opposition's team turns has ended if during that team turn one of their players was stalling so this is the second time we're seeing the stalling um rule i guess um, the stalling player must immediately move D3 plus 1 squares directly away from your end zone and towards their own. During this movement, the player automatically passes agility. Da -da 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 -da. During this movement, the player may only move diagonally or sideways to move around occupied squares. Okay, so this card's only going to come into play if your opponent was stalling. Mm, that's medium. That's medium. So walk it off. Uh, play when declaring a foul action, but before you roll any dice. If the armor roll breaks the armor of the victim, should the victim then become stunned, they gain the boneheaded trait for the remainder of the drive. That's very specific. So you've got to foul a dude. You've got to succeed in the foul. Um, and if it's stunned, they get bonehead instead. Yeah, it's okay. Sprinkler malfunction. Play at the start of an opponent's turn. Uh, while this card is in play... Apply an additional minus one modifier when any player performing a pass action tests against their PA or when every player tests against their AG to pick up or catch the ball. So minus one to passing and minus one to catching. So it kind of just makes it rain for the rest of the drive. Pothole. Play this card when the coach of the opposing team activates an open player to perform a move, pass, handoff or foul. Okay, so no block or blitz, but they're open. And this you play as an instant in their turn. So should the active player wish to move, they must dodge as if they're being marked in order to vacate the square and occupy when activated. So that doesn't count on a blitz, but will be useful against a ball carrier. Not as not brilliant, but hey, any chance uh, you any time you get to make your opponent roll more dice is good for you. Public inconvenience. Uh, play this card during the pregame step. Um, I get rid of it if the weather changes. Do not roll on the weather table. Instead, apply the following weather condition. Drainage issues. Apply an additional minus one modifier every time a player rushes. Um, in addition, minus one when any player to pick up the ball because the pitch is flooded with bad water, essentially. All right, that's thematic. Um, I don't know. It depends. If you're a fast team, might be all right. If you're a slow team, can you imagine playing that as a dwarf coach? Just be like, okay, now I cannot rush. It's going to be a two plus. Go for it. Flock of seagulls. Play this card at the start of any of your team turns before a player is activated. So this is on your team turn. Choose one standing opposing player that's not in possession of the ball. Don't like it. Whilst this card is in play, that player loses their tackle zone uh, and expires at the end of your opponent's next turn. In addition, that player cannot be activated. All right, that's quite interesting. So basically... A player gets distracted and attacked by a bunch of birds and cannot activate it, but won't work against the ball carrier. Um, is that going to be useful? Yes, if they've got any of your team turns before any player is activated. If you've got the ball, or they are about to get the ball, could be really useful on a blitz, perhaps. Um, basically, stop their ball carrier, stop somebody from blitzing your guy. Don't know. It's going to be... Um, What's the word? Situational. And I don't know if it is super. So what have we got next? We've got miscellaneous mayhem. Okay. Let's have a look at this one here. Training troubles. Uh, play this card at the start of drive sequence in which your team is the kicking team. So play this start of drive when you're kicking. After, right, after step three, blah, 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 blah. Before the receiving team takes a turn. Fine. While this card is in a play, every player on the opposing team that does not have loner gets loner 2+. Alright, that is not brilliant, but it's every player. That is reasonable because it is every single player. Now, no coach ever has a, has a, ever has a drive where everything goes their way. So giving everyone 2 plus loner could be could be good. Could be good. It's not not superb i'm still i'm still hot on the throwing teammate one myself uh keep it moving uh play this card immediately when a player on your team falls over during your team turn a turnover is not caused the active player's activation ends but you are free to continue your turn as if they had been placed prone 
So that's going to help you get out of a failed go for it once per game, basically. Um, and even if you've got the ball as well, I think. Yeah, even if you've got the ball, <laughs> it's a it's a one a one card fumblerooski basically. Uh, assassination attempts. Play this card immediately after one of the opposition's team's turns has ended. Um, during that team turn, if one of their players was stalling, so you've got to wait for your opponent to stall, then you can play this card at the end of their turn. Um, the stalling player is attacked by an assassin. Roll a d6. One no effect. Two to three placed prone. So this is the ball carrier. So two plus the ball carrier is placed prone. Four five is knocked down, which you roll for armor, and six you knock down and add one, basically knock down with mighty blow. Okay, so that's that's more reasonable. Got to wait for someone to stall, which is gonna suck a little bit because they may not stall. They may just not want to stall. They may just be moving forward a couple of squares towards the end zone, caging up safely. Uh, but if they don't, if they do stall, two plus to knock down the ball carrier, maybe even with mighty blow. Um, yeah, it's going to be all right when you when it when it comes to fruition. Uh, this beer tastes funny. Play this card during the pre-game sequence. Choose D3 players on the opposing team. These players are immediately placed prone and become stunned. So basically, you start the first turn with D3 of their players prone and stunned. We've all been through uh, the old pitch invasion where half your team gets decked and ends up stunned. That could wipe out the front line. It could just knock out one guy. So one guy being stunned before the game has started or before a driver started, it's all right. Three, lovely. Um, going to be very useful if they've got a big guy or a star player. Technicality. Play this card at the end of any of your turns, even if it ended with a turnover. Choose one player on their team. That player is immediately sent off for committing a foul. <laughs> Are you serious? Play this card at the end of any of your turns. Choose one player on the opposing team. That player is immediately sent off for committing a foul. So that just gets a guy gone for the entire game. You draw this card and just send off the... Um, <laughs> after the end of your first turn, just send off the opponent's best player. That's huge. Uh, it's all to play for. Play this card at the start of either your second, third or fourth turn of either half before any player activates. This card cannot be played during a period of extra time. Okay, that's good to know. Um, if your team scores a touchdown during this turn, roll a dice. On a five plus, your team and the player that scored the touchdown is considered to have scored two touchdowns rather than one? All right, on a five plus, you turn one touchdown into two touchdowns. So that's great for MVP, uh, not for, that's great for SPP and could legitimately change the result of a game but it's on a five plus like you've got to score you've got to play it at the beginning of a half essentially and you've got to score and roll a five plus for that to work when it works that's going to make people really salty magic sponge uh play this card with a player on your team suffers a 15 16 dead result roll a d6 on a one they're dead on a two plus they're not dead they're placed in the reserves um, however, once this card expires at the end of the game, they are still dead. However, once this card expires... <laughs> okay, so if you suffer a death, you can make them not dead until the end of the game. I'd rather have an apothecary and just uh, roll it again. Uh, Ego Trip, play this card at the end of any of your team turns, even if it ended with a turnover. Choose one player on the opposing team. Whilst this card is in play, and this is till the end of the drive, that player must be activated first in each of their team turns before... Uh, right, okay. Ego Trip. So basically, this is the card that forces your opponent to activate a specific player first. So it could be useful if they've got a ball carrier and they need to move the cage, for example. Uh, we'll just basically buy your team another turn to try and deck them. So that's medium. So that that's medium. There's some medium cards there. Uh, magical memorabilia. Let's have a look at these. Um, Oathstone of the High Coach. Play this card uh, during pre-game. You may apply a plus one modifier to the D6 roll, both when determining which coach wins brilliant coaching result and when attempting to argue the call. So it's kind of like... Yeah, all right, that's cool. So it's kind of like a better, a better than a, an assistant coach, because you get that plus one to argue the call. Helm of many eyes. Play this at the start of any of your turns. 
Choose one player on your team. Whilst this card is in play, that player gains dodge and break tackle. Uh, <laughs> okay. The player gains dodge and break tackle and the really stupid trait. Interesting. Yeah, really stupid is terrible. Um, and dodge is only, only awesome on um, someone who's going to punch things. Break tackle plus dodge is pretty good. So it's plus one to dodge and then you've got the dodge reroll. So it turns basically most people into uh into a two plus dodge uh, which is very good but really stupid's gonna hurt you spranley's cup play this card during the pre-game uh, choose one player in your team whilst this card is in play fouls cannot be committed against that player in addition injury rolls uh, made against this player cannot be modified in any way so it's just a safeguard enchanted bucket play at the end of drive sequence uh, after step one but before step two okay so if someone scores a touchdown or you go to half. Uh, choose one knocked out player in your dugout. The player immediately recovers without needing to roll. Additionally, while this card is in play and it stays in play for the entire game, this player gains both the disturbing presence and foul appearance skills. So you can bring back a knocked out person automatically and they get DP and foul appearance. All right. Sweatband of Conquest play during pregame randomly select one player on your team that's available to play while this card is in play that player gains regeneration and improves the av by one to 11 so that's going to be really good on one of your star players um not actual star players although that that's not bad either but somebody you want to keep alive it's going to be really good so for gutter runner players for war dancers things like that scrots sticky slop um play this card during pre-game one player on your team while this card is in play uh, gains catch sure hands but cannot perform pass or handoff actions so basically their gloves get sticky um, gets catch and sure hands but can't pass or hand off interesting bob's biffin helmet this is bob biffin's hat uh, start a drive sequence um, and choose one player on your team while this card is in play that player gains mighty blow plus one and may improve their strength by two when blocking or blitzing and it expires after their first action so you play it on a guy and their first block is mighty blow plus one and strength plus two that's pretty decent uh gruck the bears gauntlets um pre-game again choose one player on your team while this card is in play which is until the end of the drive they get plus one strength however once the card expires this player must reduce their strength by one until the end of the game so they get plus one strength for a drive and then minus one strength. Could be good fun on stunties. So that is the memorabilia deck. We've got heroic feats now. Let's have a quick look through these. Uh, catchers instincts. Play this card at the start of drive. Um, when you are receiving, choose one player on your team that's open and is not on the line of scrimmage. While this card is in play, they get plus one to add to catch the ball. Additionally, when this card is played, this player may immediately move any number of squares so they occupy the square in which the ball will land after deviating. So if you're receiving the ball, you play this, you get plus one to catch, and uh, you essentially get a high kick result. So you move that guy under it, and you get plus one to catch the ball for the entire game. That could be useful for some teams. Um, I'm thinking low edge teams like Dwarves or Kemri, you know. Um, or if you just want to get a Bull Centaur to catch the ball, you move under there. You get three plus to catch the ball just for free. Could be really useful. Burst of speed at the start of any of your turns. Choose one player on your team. While this card is in play, it gets Sprint and Sure Feet and gets plus one movement to a maximum of nine. Uh, so just one turn, you get plus one movement, Sprint and Sure Feet. So for a big play turn, that will be very useful. Quick thinking, uh, play this card when a player belonging to your team performs a pass action after the range has been measured um, and the target declared before you roll the dice. Choose a single standing player on your team. That player may immediately move up to three squares even if they have already been activated this turn. If the moving player falls over, a turnover is caused. Okay, so let's, let's, let's rethink this. After the range has been measured and the target square declared. So the idea is you choose a square that's within three squares of your guy and they can move three squares so it could be really useful to get an extra burst of speed if you're going for a long pass yeah that's cool not worth 100k but it's still cool uh in the zone play this card when activating a player belonging to your team um 
When this card is in play, the active player may, reduces, uh, may reduce by one any negative modifiers they suffer for being marked to a minimum of minus one. So, and it's only for one activation. So that's for dodging, that's for catching, that's for passing, leaping, but minimum of one. Mm, you still got that minimum. Uh, sizzling Shimmy. Play this card when activating a player belonging to your team. While this card is in play, the active player may apply a plus one modifier when they test against their edge to dodge. However, when this card is in play, the active player must reduce their movement by one. Okay. So they're dancing around, which so they're slower, but their their their, their edge is plus one to dodge. Again, kind of useful for stunties. They are slow though, so. Um, and then we've got punt. Play this card at the end of any of your turns, but only if a player on your team has the ball when the turn ends. Immediately place the ball in any square you want. After being placed, the ball will scatter before landing. So that's D8 three times. If the ball is not caught by a player, it will bounce as normal. So you can just get rid of the ball, and that could be used to score. So that's all right. It's interesting. Suicide Blitz. Um, play this at the start of your drive in which your team is kicking. Choose a single open player on your team that is not in possession of the ball. Interesting. Uh, this player may immediately activate as exactly as if they would during a normal team turn to perform a blitz action. For the duration of this activation, the player is considered to have the no hands trait. So, start of drive before anyone's done stuff and you're a kicking team, you get a free blitz. That's alright. Die Hard. Play this at the beginning of any of your turns. Choose D3 stunned players on your team. They immediately become prone instead. That could be useful. So these cards are quite situational. They're heroic feats. They're basically just going to do one cool thing for one turn. Again, not enough for 100k, but definitely interesting. And if we see variable costs for these, if that's 50k, that might be tempting. Um, certainly not probably as good as a keg, but some of them are pretty useful. Right, so what have we got here? Uh, benefits of training, which actually says at the bottom of the card there, Ben. Silly boy. Uh, King make a play. Uh, play this card when activating a player belonging to your team during your team turn. So your guy, your turn. While this card is in play, the active player may re-roll any dice that are made during their activation. Each re-roll is made as if a team roll had been used, opposed to a skill re-roll, for example. However, at the end of this player's activation, your team suffers an automatic turnover. So this player does everything and can re-roll any dice um however once it's done you suffer a turnover all right i think the um the the the, the text here now that's teamwork staying out of the way so one guy can, can grab the glory basically sums up what the card is about i like the flavor text it actually explains some of the cards so down the chain the ball is changing hands again and again and again play this card at the start of your turn uh, while this card is in play, the usual limit of one handoff action per turn does not apply. Instead, any number of players can perform a handoff during their activation. Okay, that's really useful in certain circumstances. So if you need to do something, stretch play, really cool. Elves, I'm going to love that card, but not massively game-changing. Very, very, very situational. Flea Flicker, here we go. Uh, play this card at the start of any of your turns. While this card is in play... Uh, your team may perform two pass actions this turn rather than the usual one. However, this uh, while this card is in play, your team may only perform quick or short pass actions. Now, a pass action, I don't know if that affects team uh, throw teammate. I think throw teammate is used instead of a pass action, so you should be able to use two throw teammates with that card. Now you're talking. Um, boot camp, play this card when activating a player belonging to your... when activating a player on your team during your turn. While this card is in play, the active player may re-roll armor or injury roll when committing a foul. However, if the result is a double, the active player will be sent off as normal. If the discarded roll is not a double, the player is not sent off. If the result of the it may re-roll either the armor or injury. That's quite useful, if you're a fouling team anyway. Helping hand. Uh, play during pre-game. One player on your team gains big hand, extra arms and sure hands for the entire game. So big hand ignores all tackle zones extra arms is plus one to catch and pick up and sure hands gives you a reroll so that just turns somebody on your team into a ball carrier 
Team Talk. Play this card at the start of drive sequence. Uh, while this card is in play and lasts until the end of your drive, D3 every time you use a team reroll. If the roll is higher than the number of team rerolls you have remaining, you immediately gain another reroll. That's quite cool. So if you're down to two rerolls, there's a good chance you're actually just going to keep regrowing your rerolls for a drive. That is actually quite useful. Um, again, swingy and may not always work, but when it does work, it's going to be great because you essentially are getting two rerolls. Is kind of where you're going with that one. Uh, switch Roo, play this card at the start of any team turn before anyone does anything. Choose two players on your team that are not in possession of the ball and that have strength four or less. These two players immediately switch places. That could be very useful. There's a card like that on Fumble, which is obviously one of the old cards. Uh, all out blitz play this card at the start of any of your team turns before anyone does stuff while this card is in play your team may perform two blitz actions rather than the usual one so that card i like so let's let's talk about this very very quickly so we've got these cards they are in the rules as it is now 100k you get a random deck and a random card now i feel like there's less complete chaff in these than there was in the old ones However, there are some cards that are awesome, getting two blitzes is always going to be helpful, and being able to immediately throw one of your opponent's players as if they'd been thrown teammated, again, that is always going to be beneficial because you're going to knock a guy down, or at least remove them from a situation. Ideally, you want to throw them into the crowd. So there are some cards that are always going to be great, and there are some cards that are rarely going to be good. And that is the issue with these cards. However, if you are playing for fun if you are chill if you are just playing with kids if you are just playing to have a laugh if you're trying something out and just just having fun with it as a board game rather than a competitive game these cards are great and they're going to add some real fun so we used uh, the special play cards in a fumble tournament and um, everyone got two and it was awesome it became a part of the game and it was it was very thematic and there was a very strong narrative when it happened so on the one hand these cards are um, swingy and can be really bad but on the other hand they can be really fun so if you are after an expansion for blood bowl the board game and you're playing at home with family or with friends or whatever this will add a lot to your game it will add a lot of narrative stuff to your game and the Preston enough ones are quite useful if you are a tournament player or a league player that's playing not necessarily to win but to develop your team and stuff this isn't going to add much except some salt and frustration so uh it's down to you whether you want them or not they are nicely done the price is reasonable it is just cards and it is an expansion for the game um though technically it is in the rule book so if you want to use these you can but 100k is going to get you a lot of other inducements that i think you're going to be better off using Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you very much for joining me and for listening to me waffle on about cards. Um, do let me know what you think of the special play cards in this edition, whether you use them in your team, in your team, in your league and, and, and your games, because I would like to know. And I will see you again soon with more Blood Bowl content. See you later, guys.